God bless you. You could sit down if you can. If you can't, I understand. But if there's a praise in you, let it out, will you? Oh, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. If there's a praise in your hands, put them together. If there's a praise on your lips, shout hallelujah. If there's a praise in your heart, shout thank you, Jesus. Well, the mighty God we serve, Honorable Pastor Dr. Jenkins. And come on, celebrate the pastor. And to pass the elect, we bless God for Dr. Sharp. And of course, we acknowledge the one whose name lay at the foundation of this great work, the incomparable Reverend Dr. Clay Evans. Come on. all of these preachers and pastors present tonight i i see you here i dare not begin calling names i'll forget to call the right name and then i'll be in trouble with those names but i thank god for you and for your presence here tonight many with whom i've shared across this nation uh, in preaching settings conferences uh, in our national baptist work and of course we celebrate tonight uh, pioneer and trailblazer in the area of social justice who has never lost touch with his roots and has always been close uh, in the work of the ministry the right Reverend Dr. Jesse Jackson come on show him some love I am grateful, I am honored tonight to have been invited to come and to share with you during this Jesus Week a uh, unique experience as always to come to the Fellowship Baptist Church is not, you don't attend fellowship, you experience fellowship. <laughs> Amen. And uh, it, it, if you leave, you, you, you won't leave the same. you either worse or better. So I thank you for the humbling uh, and honorable invitation. Thank you all for your warm welcome and reception. I bring you nothing new. It's an old story. And what intrigues me about the Bible and preaching is that um, it's the same stuff that we hear week after week, uh, but there is something mysterious about the ministry of the master. It makes it all the more intriguing. And that I bring you nothing new. It's an old story about a little baby born in Bethlehem, a little boy raised in Nazareth, a man with extraordinary powers performing miracles in the desert, and who one day put a wood beam on his shoulder walked the rugged crest of Calvary and was pinned thereon for your sins and mine and whose body having been broken shed his blood to cover all of our mess dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder died for a sinful world took out a loan borrowed another man's tomb paid it back three days later with interest and who one day with one foot on a trembling mountain, the other on a prancing cloud, said, I got this thing. All power is in my hand. Now, if you believe that, you're already on your way. You believe that? Give God some praise and glory, will you? I don't know what kind of time constraint I'm, I'm, I'm under here, but I don't want to belang at the moment. Y'all got other places to go, and y'all got to kind of uh, blow in your fist a little bit and exercise your biceps and see if you can get some berries and cherries to match. You'll catch that on the way home. <laughs> but I solicit your prayers, and um, as I know you will be praying for, and with me. Thank you, 
Dr. Jenkins, and your staff has been nothing but professional from A to Z. Thank you. God, our Father, we bless your name for this day. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your love, your mercy, your constant care and uncalculated kindness shown towards us. Thank you for the privilege to share again on your agenda. We already know that we are unfit, unfair, fickle, frail, finite, faulty, fallible, and frangible, wrapped up in these dusty and devilish frames. Yet I pray that you would look beyond our faults and failures, breathe upon us afresh your spirit for this moment. Our prayers have gone up and so has our praise. We need to hit from heaven now. Speak, Lord, in this place. Your people are listening. Give me your word and what it takes to deliver it. Give each of us the capacity to receive it. Give all of us the ability to make it practical. And we are already committed to give you the praise. Therefore, this is your servant's prayer. I pray in the only name that matters. The name of Jesus. Everybody in the house said amen. amen if you have your bibles there's a word in the 14th chapter of the book of our lord's gospel as recorded by john and i commend those of you who are staying to give honor to the reading of god's word john the 14th chapter beginning with these words once you shall have found that passage and read it there you may see these words let not that's good enough thank you you may be seated Let none. Everybody has issues. It matters not as of what your state or status is in life, society, or community. Everybody has issues something that has befallen them to the extent that it unnerves them, wrecks their brain, puzzles their minds, jerks their tears, exhausts their resources, and it occupies every class of society. The low class, the middle class, the high class, the no class, the MD, the PhD, the one with no D. Everybody has to contend with trouble. Trouble sits on every king's throne. Trouble is in every queen's quarters. Trouble is in every princess's palace. Trouble is on every commuter's interstate. It is in every pilot's cockpit. It's on every skipper's ship. Trouble is in every teacher's classroom. It's in every doctor's surgical room. Trouble is in the state house, courthouse, schoolhouse, your house, my house, our houses, and yes, the church house everybody has to contend at some point or another with trouble and it does not matter how close you are to the creator you've already been to the water you've already been baptized your soul is converted and you're feeling all right, you've been born again, blood bought, blood washed, blood cleansed, and heaven bound. Your hands are wrapped up in the wine and chains, and your feet 
have been set on the glory road, but underneath the skin, you're wrestling with something that has you upset. You frequent the pew and sometimes occupy the pulpit. You rock with the rhythm of Zion songs as you lean shoulder to shoulder with your fellow choir members. As you sing Sunday after Sunday, lunch and lovely Lord of a Lord like lyrics from your lips and your lungs. But back at the address, you got some trouble. Where you punch the clock, we're dealing with some trouble. And even as we gaze upon the political landscape of these divided states of America, we got some trouble. Whenever you can have a race-baited and color-coded House of Congress that can shift from party politics and play pigment politics because they can't handle color in the White House, we got trouble. This nation, at best, resisted intelligence wrapped up in chocolate. A soul brother who emanated from the windy city of Chicago and who occupied the Oval Office without scar, without scandal, and for eight years tried to bring a nation together Caught public enemy number one, gave a nation health care. Are y'all listening to me? Stopped two wars and tried to bring people together and walked away after eight years having been in office with the swagger of a two-time president. But the nation didn't want him. And now have relegated and condescended to a corrupt level of conduct and course of action and have accepted a buffoon for a 45th president and will do absolutely nothing about it. I need to hear somebody shout, we got trouble. Separating families at a southern border of the United States of America in the name of immigration and immigration reform. Don't you be fooled. America has a hellish habit of separating families. This is not the first time. I can't hear too good. It wasn't too long ago that your family and my family were separated on auction blocks in the same United States of America. You don't know who your kinfolk are. You, you might as well tell your neighbor, hello, cuz. You don't know who we are. I need to hear somebody shout, we got trouble. And trouble will trouble you if you allow trouble to trouble you. It's inescapable. But I'm optimistic tonight. I'm encouraged tonight. I'm inspired during this Jesus week, Jesus venue in this fellowship, in this sacred space with people whose lives have been touched by the Lord who one night after having gathered with his inner circle of friends whom Christendom has dubbed as disciples, learners, who now has sensed that the tenure of Christ in the earth domain was drawing to an end. And there was a mood of melancholy about him. There was a dis-ease about their spirit as they gathered for what was literally called the Passover. And Jesus, having sensed now that they sensed that everything was coming to an end and that it was hard enough for them with Jesus present, it would be even worse, Dr. Sharp, with Jesus not being present. You didn't feel me. No more no more Operation Breadbasket in the desert. No more, they know now there will be no more outpatient surgery for the sick who could just by the mere touching of his coattail would be healed of their diseases. There will be no more interruption of funeral processions and turning them into family reunions 
just by calling dead folk by the name and they would come back to life. All of that was about to be over. And Jesus sensed that the disciples were a bit uneased about it and uttered some words of consolation and inspiration to come and sedate their spirits by saying, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house of many mansions, if it were not so, I will have told you I go away and prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I, are y'all in here? That where I am, there you might be also. Jesus employed the word heart. In the Greek, it's pronounced cardia. K-A-R-D-I-A. We have an English derivative pronounced cardio, C-E-R-D-I-O, cardiac, C-E-R-D-I-A-C, cardiologist, C-E-R-D-I-O-L-O-G-Y. That's science whose object of study is that organ that pumps the life-giving stream throughout your anatomy that you may live. But, but that's not what Jesus was talking about. There is what is called cardiology, the study of the heart, but that's not what Jesus was talking about. There comes a point if you don't eat right, exercise right, take care of your body right, otherwise experiencing some genetic inheritance, one begins to have some impediment of the blood flow, which is the life-giving stream that flows throughout the anatomy, which affects their heart. In medical terms, it's called cardiovascular disease. In layman's terms, it's called heart trouble. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. There is a time when you ingest certain foods and beverages that disagree with your digestive system and it creates a burning sensation in your upper torso. Science call it a gastroesophageal reflux. Tell your neighbor that means heartburn. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. At some point, God forbid that it would ever happen to either of us in this place that that organ that pumps the life-giving stream throughout your anatomy decides it doesn't want to pump anymore. They call it cardiac arrest. We know it as a heart attack. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. Cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A, is a word that references the thought process in the human being, the seat of emotion, that that affects one's feelings. Jesus said, therefore, in essence, I sense that you see now that I'm about to depart the earth domain. And it will be a struggle for you to survive without my presence. But let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I'll go away and prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Whoever you are tonight, wherever you're sitting tonight, whatever matters there are that concerns you, that's too private to share with anyone else in this place, everybody has trouble. But Jesus says, don't let your trouble trouble you. I wish you had a prayer in church tonight. Whatever it is, there is a means by which you can keep yourself calm, cool, composed, collected, sedated, serene, and yet sagacious while you contend with your stress, your struggle, your strife, and your straining. Can I try to tell you? You didn't halfway answer me. Can I try to tell you? Intrinsic in the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are some helpful holy hints that may become for us some suggestive scenarios as of what we could possibly employ that we can keep ourselves calm and cool and composed and collected. Can I try to tell you? You answered me a little better. If, if, beloved, 
You will keep your heart from being troubled. You got to allow your faith to override your facts. Come on. I need to hear about four of you. I'll make five who won't mind shouting face to facts. You can't deny the facts. Don't live in a world of make believe. This is a reality. If it hurts, it just hurts. You're not, you're not in a world of make believe. Go ahead and own it. If you're lonely, you're just lonely. If you're broke, you're just broke. If you're broken, you're just broken. If you ain't got nobody, you just ain't got nobody. If you're crazy, you're just crazy. Go ahead and admit it. Come on. I need to hear somebody shout face to facts. But whenever you face the facts, always face your facts with faith. Because whenever facts faced faith, faith always won over the facts. You didn't hear what I said, did you? The facts can get you hysterical. The facts can have you pacing the floor at night. The facts can have you pulling your hair, your wig, and your weave out. Go ahead and face the facts. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled and here is how. You got to believe in God and not just believe in God, you got to believe God. You didn't hear me. Face your facts. But whenever you face your facts, face your facts with faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. Help me preach. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Matthew 17, 20 says if you've got faith about the size of a yeah. A grain of mustard seed, you can tell a mountain, get out of my way. And it behooves us to exercise our faith because in most cases, that's all we got. Can I get Ebonic right quick? Ain't got no money. Ain't got no job. Ain't got no friends. Excuse me, there are some grammarians in here. Don't have any money. Don't have any friends. Don't have any employment, but I have my faith. Can I help my young homies in here tonight, my young soul sisters in this place tonight who are not aware of the struggle? Your forefathers and your foremothers who walked the heat-laden roads of the South walking with signs, picketing and protesting to get you social justice and equal rights. They didn't have much resources, but they had their faith. Build colleges and schools and universities that are still standing today with nickels and dimes and quarters and their faith. Are y'all listening to me? They had to wear hand-me-down clothes to the one of smaller sizes in the family. They had to eat leftovers, but they remained healthy. They had to wear hand-me-down clothes, but they kept them clean and kept their shirt tails tucked in their pants and didn't wear their pants hanging around their lower half, exposing their dirty laundry and an ill-fated anatomical accoutrement to go along with it. I need to hear somebody shout they had their faith. They went to second-hand schools and read second-hand books but got a first-class education. And they had their faith. You got to have faith. And whenever you have to contend with your facts, always face your facts with faith. Because faith always wins, Doc Thomas, over the facts. The facts told Moses and Israel, you don't cross seas without bridges or boats. But faith said, we're crossing over one by one. The facts told Joshua and the nation, you don't tear down 20 by 24 feet walls that surround the city without a demolition plan, bulldozers, or dynamite. But faith said, walk on, little children, 
There's a great camp meeting. Help me preach tonight in the promised land. The facts told Abraham and Sarah that hundred year old men and women just don't have babies. But faith said, keep singing, I'm in the mood for love. The facts told Daniel that when you're on the dinner menu for a den of hungry lions, you don't come out alive. But faith said, for you, it's a dinner party. But for me, it's a sleepover. The facts told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you are enemies of the state of the Chaldean Empire. And you're about to be thrown in the fiery furnace because you won't stoop according to what you say is standing time. But faith said, the God we serve may not deliver us, but we're living witness. He's able. Are y'all listening to me? The facts told Paul and Silas that you don't get out of jail without due judicial prudence. You must retain legal counsel. You must file for an injunction and a judge has to rule in your favor. But faith said at midnight it's going to be a jailhouse rock. And the ground's going to get so happy it's going to shake chains off. The facts told Jesus that when you're dead, you're done. Jesus said that's when it's bad Friday. Count to three and see me Sunday morning. I'm going to turn bad Friday into good Friday. And I'll get up with all power in my hand. The facts told Barack Hussein Obama that you're three-fifths of a human being. You're not only not a human, you're not a real citizen of the United States of America. And having been classified as a citizen of America, you'll never participate in the patriotic process. And having gotten the right to participate in the patriotic process, you'll never be president. Eight years later, he walks away with the swagger of a two-time president. Are y'all listening to me? The fact said you weren't going to make it. The fact said you weren't going to mount anything. The fact said you wouldn't be where you are tonight. Help me preach to anybody on your row and tell them, get a good look at me. Here I am. If you believe in God. Believe also in me. You gonna keep yourself calm? This crowd is pretty upset. I don't. I don't. I want to pray for them. Let me see. Now you gonna keep it calm over it? Okay. They are. They. They. They're thinking about it. You'll keep yourself calm and composed. Okay. Let us go back and get them. We don't want to leave them out. You gonna keep yourself from being hysterical? All right. If you're gonna be successful, you got to realize that your future is far superior to your present. I need to hear somebody shout tomorrow. Whatever your state or your status is at present, the old wood floor church, the one Dr. Jenkins without carpet on the floor, chandeliers from the ceiling, faceted or stained glass windows, a powerful PA system and an educated pastor. They had a third grade education, wore coveralls to church and the central air was to raise the window. But they were not bogged or burdened down, dejected because of their present socioeconomic status in the United States because they read a few passages of scripture that indicated to them that despite how things are at present, eventually they will get better. You didn't hear what I said. For that to be your disposition, beloved, you've got to dispense with negativism and believe with positivism and hold on with optimism, contending that despite how things are at present, eventually they're going to get better. Are you listening to me? The Bible tells me that things will get better, and I'm glad that they will. When you read Romans 8, 28, 
it tells you things will get better. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and for those who are the call according to his purpose. Isaiah 40, 31 tells us that things will eventually get better. If you wait on the Lord, yeah, you'll renew your strength. You shall mount upon wings like eagles. You'll run and not get weary. You'll walk and not faint. I need to hear somebody shout, it's going to get better. When you read Psalms 30 and 5, it says, weeping endured but a night. But joy, I need to hear about four of you. I'll make five who won't mind shouting, joy is coming in the morning. It's got to get better than this. Oh, praise his holy name. Because this is not all that we have. I know that back in the day, in your pre-Jesus days, you recall uh, the era wherein uh, advertisement with beer commercials or of beer commercials flooded the market like Slits and uh, Miller. And I know you were having a holy moment. Paps Blue Ribbon. But do y'all remember Old English? Now, past all of them hadn't been so saved so long. <laughs> Doc Jackson, when Old English hit the market, there was a series of commercials, one of which, or they presented a, sponsored a series of commercials, one of which presented a fisherman on a lake who, after having caught his catch, was grilling fish and drinking beer. And he holds up this can of Old English and declares, it doesn't get any better than this. I contend, beloved, that if that's all you have relegated your future to, you don't have much of a future. It's got to get better than this. I need about three of you, I'll make four, who won't mind testifying to anybody on your own and telling them it's got to get better than this. If all we have is a lunatic for a president, it's got to get better than this. If all we have is a dynamic of our religious community who can preach Jesus in public, but who won't leave little boys alone in private? And who have the egregious gall, guts, and chillings to take themselves to court? It's got to get better than this. I need to hear somebody shout, it gets better. Jesus said it gets better, Dr. Sharp. And he said, in my father, this is going to bless your heart, Dr. Thomas, and I know I've got to quit. In my father's house are many mansions. What Jesus referenced in agrarian culture and in Mediterranean society featured a father of a family who having discovered that his wife was with child would automatically build on or add on another room to an already existing edifice. So that in the event of that child having grown and having left home would come into some unforeseen incident or experience which would put them in an impecunious position. Let church say, what you say? It means that the father added a room to the house so that when the child would become grown and leave home and run out of resources, the child wouldn't have to worry. All the child would have to do is just get back home because their provisions were already made before they ever left home. Are y'all listening to me? Come here for a minute. When Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions, he was simply saying, I'm going to troubleshoot your trouble before trouble ever troubles you. You miss your shout cue again? Let me help you. Before you come into your issues, Jesus has already been there before you get there. If I had about three of you, I'll make four who can give God some praise right now. You know why? 
you ought to be able to shout ahead of time and let me tell you why you ought to shout ahead of time is because he's made preparations ahead of time he has your breakthrough ready ahead of time he has your miracle ready ahead of time he has your deliverance together and ready ahead of time so since he's been working ahead I need about two of you since I can't get three I'll make three who can pray them right now for what the Lord has already done can I get a witness come on right now right now right now right now give him some tomorrow praise give him some next week praise give him some next month praise Give him for the praise for the car you're getting ready to buy. For the house you're getting ready to live in. Give him some praise ahead of time. Watch this. This is going to bless your heart, Dr. Sharp, and I know i got to quit somewhere. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. Not the house being a mansion, but every room in the house. Don't you miss this. Don't you miss this. If you got a house with many mansions and every room being a mansion, you got more house than you'll ever need. You miss your shout cue again. Help me preach to anybody on your own and tell him he's already provided more than I need. More love, more grace, more mercy, more deliverance, more answers, more power. Can I get a witness? Okay, 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 okay. Y'all gonna keep it cool up there? A few of them answer me. Y'all gonna kind of hold it together? Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, yeah. Believe also. You don't mind if I celebrate a little bit? Believe also in me. If you're gonna keep it, if you're gonna keep it calm, cool, and collected you're gonna to have to find consolation in the statement of the Savior I need to hear somebody shout he said it Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I will have told you and if you ever wondering as of what Jesus said would ever become validated true and substantial you've got to go back and see what he said when he said what he said the first time he ever said what he said when you read in Genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep when you get to Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 it reads and God said when you get to Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 it begins by saying and God said when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 it begins by saying and God said when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 it begins by saying and God said when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 
It began by saying, and God said. When you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, it reads, and God said. When you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 24, it reads, and God said. When you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it begins by saying, and God said. When you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 29, it says, and God said. And when God said whatever he said, the emanations of his vocabulary accounted for a universe leaping into existence. But that's Genesis chapter 1. When you read John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was light, and the light was the light of men. When you get to John chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, And the Word made flesh. So the same one in Genesis chapter 1 is the same one in John chapter 1. And the same one that was speaking in Genesis chapter 1 is the same one in John chapter 14. So what he said in Genesis chapter 1 and what he said came to pass, then what he said in John 14 has to happen like he said. Shake somebody's hand and tell them he said it. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. He said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. He said, I'll be with you. Oh, praise his name. I'll never leave you and I never will forsake you. Somebody here ought to shout, I'm standing on what he said. He walks with me every once in a while. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The Son of God discloses. I tell you what he does. He walks with me. He talks with me and he tells me I am his own and it's your yeah, the joy we share and we tarry there none other has ever known thank you Holy Ghost for the words of Jesus he said I'm going away to prepare a place for you that where I there you might be also let the church say he's getting it ready oh praise his name he said i'm going away to prepare a place for you that where i am there you might be also i believe i'll tell you one more time he said i'm going away to prepare a place for you that where i am there you might be also shake somebody's hand and tell him if the Lord can fix it in heaven, he can handle it on earth. If the Lord can arrange it in heaven, he can work it out on the earth. If the Lord can handle it in heaven, he can make a way on the earth. Oh, praise his name. Jesus said, I'm getting it ready for you. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and give him glory. Go ahead and shout right now because Jesus is getting it ready. My Lord is getting it ready for that great day. I bid y'all good day, but before I leave you, I got to tell you, let not your heart, let not your heart help me preach to two people. Turn around and tell 
somebody whatever it is God's got it whatever it is trouble in my way I have to cry sometimes I lay awake at night that's all right I know Jesus won't it fix it if he doesn't fix it right now he'll fix it after a while tonight. If you're not too dressed up tonight, get on out of your seat and come on down the aisle. Dance your dance. Shout your shout. Praise your praise and give God the glory. He's working it out. Can I get a witness here? Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Tell them, neighbor, I got a feeling that everything gonna be all right. You ought to shout all right. Shout all right. Yeah. Shout all right.